forward and upward. Um, so let's do some theorems. So more definitions. There's a lot of definitions when we talk about graphs. So N of V is the neighborhood of a vertex V equals the set of all other vertices U such that U and V are connected. So here's A, B, C, D, E, F. And I don't know, G. So the neighborhood of A would be all the vertices that are connected to A. So it looks like B, G, and E. And the neighborhood of B would be all the vertices connected to B, so A, C, and D, and so on. And along with that, so U contained in set V is a neighbor of, I should use some symbol other than V, of W contained in V if um, U and W are connected. So two vertices that are connected, we call them neighbors. And so the neighborhood of V is basically the collection of all neighbors of V. definitions. The degree of a vertex U and here we're talking about in an undirected graph so the degree of a vertex is the number of edges incident to that <coughs> vertex. So the degree of A would be 1, 2, 3, because there's 1, 2, 3 edges touching A. The degree of B would also be 3, because we've got 1 edge, 2 edge, 3 edges. The degree of E would be 2, because we have 2 edges, 1 here and 1 here. Make sense? Let me make this a little more complicated. So now the degree of D would be 1, 2, 3, 4. So you're just counting edges. Um, but there's an important detail here. Loops count twice. So if I have a loop like this, the degree of G would actually be 4 we got one edge, two edge, but the loop we actually count twice. So it's not really edges, more like connections? It's more like connections, yeah. So the number of things like touching that vertex. All right, so we're going to have a theorem about degrees. So let me draw another graph. There's a random looking graph. Okay, so here's a theorem. Well, um, 
Let me go back one page. So if we want to talk about the degree of U, we can just say degree of U. Or sometimes we write it as a little hunchback D of U. So that's just shorthand for the degree of U. Not a partial derivative. All right, so that makes this theorem a little easier to write. So the sum over all vertices of the degrees equals two times the number of edges. So this is for a graph whose vertices are V and whose edges are E. So the sum of the degrees of all vertices ends up being equal to twice the number of edges. Well, let's see if this works first. So degree of A is what? All right, now I should call on people. I got my caller thing going here, but nobody's, lots of people are missing. So Dom is not here. Uh, Eric, so we, we want the degree of B. Five. Five, good. Uh, Trevor, degree of C. Three, four. Four. All right, degree of D from Roman. We're, we're hitting everybody here. All right, degree of E, Taylor. One. One. And degree of F from Harinder. Uh, two. two. Awesome. All right, so add up, and how many edges do we have? Just by counting up. I won't call on someone. <coughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, I think it's seven. All right, so add up our degrees. 2 plus 2 plus 5 plus 4 plus 2 plus 1 equals 4, 9, 13, 15, 16. We missed an edge somewhere. 1, 2, 3, 4. four 5, 6, 7, 8. Yeah, you're missing the one between B and C. Oh, okay. I did. Purple to the rescue. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right, you're right. All right, so number of edges is eight. Some of the degrees is 16. That's equal to two times eight. So we've proven it, right? So degree here not mean not degree in triangles and not. No, 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 not like an angular degree. So degree in this case is just the number of, of edges connecting that to something. Okay. <laughs> so um so how would we prove this? I mean, does it make sense first of all? Suppose we add one more vertex somewhere. So here's a new vertex, Z. If we don't connect it to anything, the sum of the degrees doesn't change because the degree of this is zero, and the number of edges doesn't change because there's no edges that we've added. If we add one edge, this is going to have degree one, and whatever we connect this end to, the degree of that's going to go up by one. So the total sum of degrees is going to increase by two. And the number of edges has gone up by one, so this is going to increase by two. And if we bring this back to itself, since we're counting loops twice, the degree of this will be two, so our sum of degrees will go up by two. Two times the number of edges goes up by two. 
So how do we prove this in general? We proved it for adding one particular edge, one vertex to one graph, but how do we prove it in general? Mathematical induction, right? Absolutely. You prove this for a graph containing n vertices, and then you use this kind of argument to say if you add one more vertex and one edge, right? And then you can prove that if you add one vertex and n edges, it's still true, and then you can induct and say if you add m vertices and n edges, it's still true, and you can formalize it. But the intuition is really this straightforward. Put an edge in, it's got to start and end somewhere. Two degrees are going to get incremented. So total degree is going to be even number. So the total degree is an even number, and this is a nice little corollary. The sum of the degrees of all your vertices is always even, which is kind of cool. And it's not totally obvious that that should happen. But if you start drawing graphs every time you have an edge leaving somewhere, it's got to go somewhere else. Yeah? Uh, a little bit of syntax. Is that W exists in V? Yeah, for every W. So V is a set of vertices. So for every point in that set, for every vertex. So this is like a summation over a bunch of things where those things are, are all of your vertices. So it's like a for all in statement in bash, or for each in, where you're adding over a set. Well, so this is for undirected graphs, but if we have directed graphs, we get something similar. So for a directed graph, Here's what we got. Um, suppose that we have an edge like this going from U to W. So this edge corresponds to the ordered pair UW. So U is adjacent to W. We can also say W is adjacent from U. So U is adjacent to W because it's going to W. W is adjacent from U because the edge comes from U. And U, remember, is the initial vertex. W is the terminal vertex. OK, so we can describe the in degree of u, which we can write as degree with a little minus sign of u, or we can write as a delta with a minus sign <coughs> of u. And this equals the number of edges which end at u. So the number of edges whose terminal vertex is u. And the out degree, which is degree plus of u, or delta plus of u, equals number of edges from u. So definitions are nice for precision, but they're sometimes confusing. So let's just draw a picture. Okay, so the in degree of A is 1. We have one edge going into A. The out degree of A is also 1. We have one edge leaving A. So in degree of A is equal to 1. The out degree of A 
is equal to 1. All right, so how many edges are going into B, Nate? Two. Two. All right, we got one, two. And how many are going out of B? Two as well. Also two. Awesome. Okay, in degree for C, uh, Damon, I don't think Damon's here. Uh, none. <laughs> so what's the in degree for C? How many edges are going into C? In the So this one? Uh, the two. Two, right, so that one and that one. And then how many edges are going out? From C. Just one. just one, it's just that right there. Cool. All right, so D, yeah, we'll keep picking on people. So Khan, where'd Khan go? He never misses class. Uh, Jacob, Trevor. Uh, two. All right, so in degree of D, we've got one, uh, two, and then the out degree. Also, be two. also two, despite my kind of sloppy arrows. All right, so E, let's see, how many do we have going in? It looks like one, two going in, and we have three going out. One, two, three. So let's add these up. So two, four, six, eight, nine. Three, five, six, eight, nine. Same number. Let me do my famous edge count again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And this is a thing. So the sum, so again we have a graph V comma E, the sum over all the vertices of the in degree is equal to the sum over all vertices of the out degree, which is equal to the number of edges. So not multiplied by two, because this is really a generalization of that last theorem. Because if it's an undirected graph, then let's see how does this work. If it's an undirected graph, it would look like we had an edge going in this direction from B to E and another edge going in that direction from E to B. All right, so those are some useful theorems. All right, so some examples of graphs. Because um, I can draw random graphs, but there's some standard graphs we can use um, that'll be useful to refer to. So a complete graph. So complete graphs are represented by K sub N. So we're going to have n vertices and they're completely connected. So K2, two vertices connected. K3, three vertices, every pair of vertices connected. K4, four vertices, <coughs> every pair of vertices connected. K5, 
five, five vertices, every pair connected. All right, a cycle. C sub n is n vertices with just a line of connections from one to another to another going back to the first. So C3 looks the same as K3. C4 looks like this. C5 looks like that and so on. And a wheel, Wn equals Cn plus one more vertex. So W3 looks like cycle 3. But we add one more vertex in the middle and we connect that to everything. And W4 is C4 with one more vertex in the middle connected to everything and so on. And you'll notice that, for example, C4 is like W4. W4 just has some extra stuff thrown in, right? So we can define this notion of a subgraph, and it's kind of like a subset. And in some intuitive sense, C4 looks like a subgraph of W4 because it's got a subset of what we have in W4. It's got all the vertices, and it's got some of the edges, but it's also missing a few. So we'll do a, a formal definition of subgraph and then we'll call it quits for the week. So definition. So a graph W comma F is a subgraph of the graph V comma E. If the set of vertices over here is a subset of the vertices over there and the set of edges is a subset of the set of edges. So kind of what you might expect. So take a graph, throw away some vertices and edges, you've got a subgraph. Just like take a set, throw away some elements, you've got a subset. Basically the same concept. So we can do operations on graphs. We can remove edges, we can contract edges, we can remove vertices, and we can describe ways to do these things, and we'll do that on Monday. Um, we'll look a little more at other ways to represent graphs in computers. We'll talk about how to tell when two graphs are the same, isomorphic, and then we'll start looking at paths, ways we can move around a graph, and this will take us into some famous theorems and some applications, and then we'll talk about finding shortest paths through a graph. All right, enjoy the weekend. I will see you on Monday.